Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you how to have water animate along a curve and that can be any curve and before we start I just want to say that this is a Blender 3.5 tutorial. If you don't have 3.5 <coughs> God I just ate some pasta and I just went down the wrong pipe. If you do not have 3.5 you're going to choke just like I did. Uh, you're going to be missing a node that is actually essential. So this is geometry nodes based uh, and before we start, I just want to say this video is sponsored by Squarespace. More about them at the end of the video. Okay, so water along the curve seems complicated, right? Kind of is. Let's talk about it. So in geometry nodes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a curve. And this curve is going to be the path that the water flows along. Again, uh, you can edit this to be any kind of path that you want. So with this path, what we're essentially going to do is we're going to have a bunch of particles or a bunch of points sweeping along the curve and we're going to mesh them together into a water thing using a couple tricks. So starting off with the path, uh, what I want to do is I want to know where we are along the curve. So I'm going to sample the curve and this will tell me most importantly position and normal information that we're going to be using. And what I want to do is I want to take a bunch of points. So I'm going to use the points node. And I know it kind of seems like this is coming out of nowhere, but we just got to construct this and then it's going to make more sense. We have all these points that we are going to move. In other words, we're going to set the position of them uh, to this position. OK, so what you're going to see here is we have a single point. Really, it's 100 of them in the same position that we can control uh, using this factor going from one end of the curve to the other. So uh, now what we can do is we can say, hey, don't have every point start at the beginning or have don't have every point be on top of each other. Let them be at different points along this path. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for this factor, we are going to use the spline parameter. OK, nothing fancy here. But if we add to it, so you can see addition is basically letting us go along the curve. If we add to it a random value, uh, this is now going to distribute our points because each one's going to have a value between 0 to 1. So some of them are going to be near 0 and some of them are going to be near 1 and they're going to go along the path. Cool, cool. Um, I want to animate this over time as well. Uh, so I'm going to add time itself. And let's see what this looks like. Cool. <laughs> so all of them eventually go to a factor of 1 or greater. So they kind of go over here, right? And we want this to repeat. So uh, I'm just going to send this through a fraction. And there we go. A fraction basically makes it repetitive between 0 and 1. So if it's 1.3, in other words, it's above 1, we cut out that integer part and we just make it 0.3. So it constrains it to a 0 to 1 interval. Beautiful. So we have points along a curve, but we kind of want them to be along a path, a path that has some thickness, like a band, if you will. Um, not just the curve itself. And this is where the normals come in. So you can see if I take this and I offset it along the normal, it's going to push all the points along the normal of the curve. However, just like before, if we take this and we scale this effect by, again, a random value, that's kind of the trick here. And make sure you're going to get some weird behavior, by the way, if you have the seed set to the same seed as before. So just pick a different seed. And now you can see uh, it's kind of a band along the path. So it's either staying on the curve at zero or it's going along the normal by a factor of 1.7 or somewhere in between. I want to center this, so I'm going to say have it go from negative 0.5 to 0.5. And uh, this is moving a bit too quickly, so I'm going to divide time by like five. So we're saying go five times slower. And uh, what we could do here to be fancy is again, we can randomize this. Again, picking a different seed. So some particles go fast, some of them go slow. I'd make sure that at minimum, they go at a speed of two, two to five. And this kind of looks like a nice flowy thing. Uh, as we increase the number of points, it's gonna follow the same pattern. Uh, one other quality of life thing I wanna do before we mesh this and turn it into a solid object is I want there to be pinching right here and right here, because otherwise it kind of looks like the bands kind of go, enter and go out of nowhere, in a sense. Uh, let me save this, by the way. I'm going to call this Patreon Water Curve, because it's going to be available on Patreon. So what I want to do is I want to pinch the uh, tips of this. 
you know, there's a lot of things we pinch the tip of. I'm talking about condoms. It's funny because condoms are a sex thing. Uh. <laughs> okay, we want to pinch the tips of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm look at, going to look at the spline parameter, which is going to tell us where we are along this curve. Actually, we want this fraction version that has the randomized uh, speeds and offsets and all this. And what I want to do is I want to take this... Uh, band thing and multiply it by this. So you can see uh, now they're kind of coming out of nowhere and then expanding. This is relative to this curve. If I was to flatten this, it will all stay on the curve or we could invert it. Point being, uh, we can keep the tips at zero and the middle at some high value. And you can see now this actually pinches the beginning and end because we're looking at the modified spline parameter. We're saying where it's near zero, pinch it to zero. In the middle, have it be a value of one for the multiplier, and at the end, pinch it again. Pinch me. So we have this. Now we just need to mesh it, uh, which is actually pretty simple, but this is where the 3.5 comes in. So first thing we want to do is a points to volume. Uh, this turns it into kind of a fog, and you're thinking, oh, why a volumetric? Because we go back to a mesh, volume to mesh. And you can see we've kind of meshed this thing, but it looks horrible, really bad. Uh, to make it look better, increase the voxel amount, so the resolution in some sense. And for the radius, we want to either bring it down, so it's, each ball has a smaller thing, or this is another opportunity uh, for some randomization, so it looks kind of blobular, right? So we go from uh, 0 to, let's say, 0.2. That way some of the parts of the water look thicker and some of them look thinner. Um, one thing before I continue is I'm going to increase the number of points, which will make this look more solid. And uh, normally the way you smooth this is you increase the adaptivity, uh, but it's going to result in this choppy mesh. Uh, so here's a trick to actually smooth uh, all of this out. First of all, uh, increase the resolution again. That's going to make it a bit smoother. Uh, but here's the trick. What we are going to do is we're going to change the position of what? Of every single point. Sorry, the fan's going off because now we're getting into the render intensive part. I'm going to modify the position by a blur attribute. So if you do not have 3.5, this shouldn't be a node you have. So blur attribute. We're going to run this through like more iterations means smoother. So I'm going to run it through like 12 iterations. And now you can see this almost looks like water. It's not choppy. And you can see it has this kind of nice flow to it. Um, I just want to emphasize again, you can edit this path. The longer the path, the faster it will look because we have the speed constraint to like a certain thing. Uh, but what you could do is you could take the curve length and make it uh, a function of like how fast it's going. Point is you could slow it down if you wanted to. Uh, but I'm not gonna. Um, another thing to note is we could, uh, in edit mode, we could add a circle. But this only does one curve at a time. So I'm going to delete the first curve. And now we have like a flow going in a circle. So uh, point being, you can use any kind of curve. Um, but now you could kind of edit this and make it look better, right? But this is kind of the essence of it. So you have it go along whatever path you want. And now the question is, how do you make it look like water? Well, that's pretty simple. Uh, we're going to do some material stuff. So I'm going to open up cycles. I'm going to load in an HDRI environment, especially since we want to refract and reflect light, since this is a transparent thing. Um, so let's see what this looks like so far. So we have our custom thing with an HDRI. Uh, for this HDRI, I'm going to make it transparent and also, very important, I'm going to make a transparent glass so we can actually see through it. And then finally, I know, I know, so much buildup. Uh, we want to apply a material to this. And for this material, we want it to be water-like, uh, which is actually pretty simple to do. You make it transmissive, so now you can see it kind of looks clear, uh, but you want to bring down the roughness, and this is what's going to make it look kind of water-like, depending on the angle you look at it from. Because if you look at it from the top view, you can kind of see through it, just like you would with water. Uh, one trick we can do to make this a bit more visible is you give it a bit of color, like a bit of a blue. And now you can see we have water going along a path. Uh, if you don't want it to be this transparent thing, uh, you can disable transparent glass, and this will make it look more the way you might expect. But for a realistic render, I would recommend this with a lower saturation, higher value. 
And that's how you have water along a path. Uh, let's try it again with the circle just to see what it looks like. So I'm going to delete the initial curve. Yeah, that looks like water going along a path, does it not? <laughs> um, so final notes I just want to include in this is uh, you want to modify the speed based off of a function of length. You can do that. Uh, but also the number of points is really going to determine what the simulation looks like. Because if you have a low amount, it will look like water droplets, right? If you have a high amount, it's going to have a lot of points to mesh together. And if you have a lot of points, it's going to really look like a solid surface. So there you go. How long did we go for? 10 minutes? Cool. So um, at this point in the tutorial, let me get my face on the full screen. And I probably also want to close Blender at this point. I'm going to save my project. And hopefully that will make my laptop quieter. Laptop. Shh, 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 shh. Okay, there we go. Uh, so at the end of this video, I just want to say that this video is generously sponsored by Squarespace. For those of you who do not know what Squarespace is, I, I, I pity you. But uh, it's a service that lets you make a website without any of the hassle. You don't need to know how to code, any of that HTML stuff. You just drag along these squares or blocks. I mean, it's called Squarespace, so squares, uh, to construct your website. And my website, cgmatter.com, is made uh, using Squarespace. Uh, three features you might want to know about before you sign up for Squarespace is one, you have access to analytics, so you can see who's going to your website, demographic type information. Uh, two, you can uh, embed social media feed directly uh, into your site, so you don't need to redirect to Twitter, you can just embed Twitter into your, your Twitter feed into the thing. And uh, thirdly, I already mentioned this, but you just move around these squares. It's automatic cropping and automatic placement. Uh, you just put it where you want and it works. Um, for those of you that are interested, and hopefully it's a lot of you, hopefully a lot of you are making a website for various reasons, uh, you can go to squarespace.com to build your website and you can just do that for free. And when you're ready to take that website live, uh, you can use my link in the description to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. So check that out. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring and hopefully you learned something from this tutorial.